We're going to look at a passage today that begins with praising God and ends with, in this you greatly rejoice. And it reminds me of this saying that if something is too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. I learned in the news that someone I went to high school with is being indicted on federal wire and bankruptcy fraud charges along with his son. They claim to be taking people's investments and turning businesses around, that businesses that were struggling. But according to the indictment, what was really happening was they were using the money on themselves and living these lavish lifestyles. And one investor said that they were promised that within two to three weeks, their money would double. Welcome to Truth Talk with Ed Skipper, published three times a week. So in the financial world, it's usually true. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. But in the spiritual world, there are things that seem too good to be true that are true. Listen to the words of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5, and a little bit into verse 6. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy. Now there's the first great truth. God is merciful. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth. I'm born again in Christ. I have a new nature. He's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I have a hope that's alive because Jesus has risen and he is alive. And it is into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. Those of us who are in Christ have an indestructible inheritance. Cannot perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. We are kept by God's power through faith. Another thing that seems too good to be true. And as Peter piles up the blessings and he says in this, you greatly rejoice. So Peter praises God because of the glories of salvation and says that the people are praising him and greatly rejoicing in this. Have you ever had a preacher say to you, Come on, say amen, respond, respond more to me than what you are doing. Have you ever had a worship leader say, come on and sing louder, you can do better, sing with more enthusiasm. I'm not a big fan of that. And the reason is that what I want to do and what I encourage other people to do is point people to Jesus and the glories of salvation. You know, there's a place in... Hood River, Oregon, where if you, south of Hood River, you come across around certain corners and you get this beautiful vista of Mount Hood. And it is breathtakingly beautiful. And nobody needs to say to me, say ooh, say ah. All that needs to happen is I need to get a glimpse of that mountain and I will be in awe of that mountain. And so it is with us. If we can get a glimpse of the glories of salvation, then we will be prepped to praise him. Hey, if you're on a platform that allows it, why don't you share one glorious element of salvation with us that you particularly appreciate? And until next time, may you be captivated by these things that Jesus has done for us that seem too good to be true.